Hello, everybody. This is Phil Simborg from the Backgammon Learning Center, and I'm here with my co-teacher and good friend, John O'Hagan. And there's a reason we're here today. Uh, I was uh, playing uh, in a, uh, a match and came up with a cube problem that I really didn't understand, completely didn't understand it. I was very upset about it. And even after I looked at it, I didn't understand it. So uh, by the way, last night I had dinner with a with a giant, a very famous backgammon player who made the same mistake I did. So I don't feel quite so bad, but I thought this would be a great time to get a lesson from John O'Hagan because in the entire world, I don't think there's many people that are better at understanding cube play than John O'Hagan. And uh, he's a great teacher. He's taught me a lot at the Backgammon Learning Center. Uh, we have 25 teachers. We all share material and a tremendous amount of our cube information comes from John. He theorized, of course, the O'Hagan's Law, which is a fantastic uh, tool for the cube. And he's also, he's helped me with live take points and how to figure out when to double and when not to. And uh, it's really been incredible. So I thought I can't think of anybody better I would like to get advice from. So say hello, John. Hello, everybody. Okay, let's get right to the position. I hope this is a good learning process for everybody. I'm looking extre extreme gamut, of course. Um, if you don't have extreme gamut, you should get it. Let me get my this, our beautiful pictures out of the way. So here's the position that came up. It's a match to seven, and I'm white, and I have three, and my opponent has one. So I'm four away. By the way, I always set it to the away score because that's all that really matters. And by the way, John and I are both on our way to Monte Carlo within the next couple of days. And according to Mark Olson, if you want to put on your score sheet the away score instead of just the actual score, that's going to be acceptable in Monte Carlo. Mark agrees with me that that's the proper way to score backgammon. The only thing we want to be sure of is people don't get confused if one's doing has a score showing one and the other one has a score showing six away. So maybe you put down both. But anyway, I'm leading. I need four points to win the match and I'm white and my opponent needs six points to win the match. So what do you do? Do you think that white has a double here? And if white were to double, should blue, should red uh, take or pass? Give it a little thought. If you want to pause the video, you can. Uh, now I'll tell you, I didn't even consider doubling. And then when I put the, when I looked at the analysis on, it was on Galaxy, uh, and I, I'm going to bring up the rollout position now. Open. I call it, I call it my amazing cube because it amazed me that this is a double. And I rolled it out and I realized I had made a terrible mistake not doubling. And then usually I can look at it and figure it out. This time I couldn't. Even looking at it, even looking at the numbers, I couldn't figure out how in the world I was making a 25 error, a monster error, how in the world I was winning this much and gammons are almost tied. I couldn't understand why this is a double. So I'm gonna shut up now and ask John to help me learn learn about this. Okay, uh, if I was playing, uh, you know, say on Galaxy and this position came up and I'm white, I would probably reach the same conclusion that you did which is I would not double it. Say, okay, I'm down in the race. True, I have those nine pointing numbers and I have the loose hits, but if black hits back, you know, especially hits back and covers or hits back without covering and I don't come in, I won't like it. So I, I would also incorrectly not double this, but- You, you also um, incorrectly miscounted the pointing numbers. Shouldn't you count double one as a pointing number? Well, yeah, it's uh, a weaker, pointing number but yeah i mean you can but uh they're the right play is five to four twice and 13 11 so it's uh not as good as like the the other pointing numbers i got you know, but, okay. it, but it's you got, close you got nine and a half pointing numbers yeah 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 <laughs> so anyway um now the more you think about it though now you can see why it is a double uh first of all those nine pointing numbers Unless you uh, roll one of the ones where you break in the eight point, unless black rolls a six two from the roof, then uh, you've lost your market by a mile, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, also, if you hit loose and black fails to hit back, those are also big market losers. Okay. And then the anti-joker sequences consist of a few different categories. Number one, you hit loose, black hits back, and you dance. Or... 
Um, some of the times black, uh, I'm sorry, red will hit and cover, which will give black a five point board. Uh, but even if black rolls a, a number that just hits without covering, you're, if you then dance, you know, those are really anti-jokers too. And then there's a group of numbers where you don't hit, like six one, five one, numbers like that. Uh, now those are still pretty good for you in that if black does roll a five or six to run out, uh, most of the time you'll get at least a single shot. Most of the time you'll get a double shot. Um, also, um, uh, one thing to notice is that if you, and I looked at all of your possible roles and how you're supposed to play them according to XG, and according to XG, uh, no matter what you roll, black or red should not redouble, okay? So uh, there's a few ones where you might hesitate on, uh, you know, after it goes double take, uh, where you might hesitate on uh, what the best play is, like 6-4, for example. According to XG, you, you make a big play, 16-10, to 8-4. to 4. So it does leave a few blots around. Um, and then with like 4-1, 3-1, and 2-1, XG says you just pick and pass. Um, By the way, I rolled a 2-1, and I didn't pick and pass. I hit, and I, and I, and I didn't lift, which was a mistake, and I got hit and lost. Okay, okay, yeah. And, By the uh, way, part of let me just show you a good tool in XG. Uh, it, it, what John is doing in his head, XG also helps us do using dice distribution. And if you take a dice distribution, it shows you your good and bad rolls and how good and bad they are and what they are. But you can also extend it to uh, uh, to details and see how you would play each role uh, uh, and the responses uh, by going to first roll. You can see how you play it. And then is it second roll or expanded? Expanded shows you uh, how you would play, how he would play each response. So uh -huh. all the things that John's doing in his head, XG has already done for us to help you. Of course, over the board, you got to just do this on your own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, also in terms of the match score, even though you are leading, you are four away. And um, if you look at the dead take point for the trailer at this score, it's higher than the normal 25%. It's more like 29%. Uh, now, black or red does have, uh, does get some, you know, quite a bit of value from owning the cube. But notice that on those sequences where you lose your market by either pointing on the four point or you hit loose and black fails to hit back, Owning the cube doesn't really do red much good because uh, red, red's in a really uh, weak position. So um, therefore, uh, I can now see why it is a double. But uh, to be honest right, about now, it, over the board, I, I would have missed it. Yeah. Okay. Now, it, the other factors that I, I think you didn't mention that I, I'm not sure why you didn't mention them, but the gammon value when you turn the cube to two is pretty high because if you win a gammon, you win the match. Right, right. now it says you only win about 8% gammons, but if you make that point or hit loose and he doesn't hit back, those gammons are going to jump up pretty good, aren't they, to about 20% or so? Um, well, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, they, they will jump up somewhat, but I mean... Well, let's uh, just, let's, we can do that. We can, we can, we can give... Uh, we can give you a three two, which is a perfect roll, yep. and see what the gammons are after after you roll a three two. Sure, sure. Uh, they get. Oh my God, you're right. There's still only seven. How can that be? It's still only seven percent. Yeah, because uh, you know, red's a red will be favored to enter, and then he'll start saving his out uh, red's outfield checkers, and you'll probably just close out one checker and uh, red's other. 14 checkers will be in their inner board. Now, once in a while, yeah, you can uh, maybe uh, uh, slot your, your two point, and then maybe red rolls a two from the roof and has to leave another blot on their side of the board, and then you hit it, and then you close them both out. But as you know, when you close out two checkers and the other side's uh, 13 checkers are all on their inner board, you're an 40%. underdog to get the gamut. 40%, yeah. right. 40%, yeah. So this is not about the gammas yet. Let's go back to the, the analysis again. Uh, uh -huh. I should have saved it. File, open. 
It's more about the fact that you win 71% of the time and you lose your get you lose your markets uh so by by so much. Yeah, yeah. Um would you have dreamed over the board that you can that your wins are this high in this position? That's what that's what fooled me the most. That's a good question. Um I I think I would have stopped thinking about it when I glanced at the pip count differential and thought about the bad sequences, uh, uh -huh. I wouldn't have really thought much more beyond that. I would have just rolled. So, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, I mean, now, now that you, you ask it, uh, yeah, I mean, those nine market losers, you win eight and a half of those probably, uh, well, you know, the, and, I've got and then, O'Hagan's law. I've got O'Hagan's law memorized, and O'Hagan's law says that one of the key things of O'Hagan's law is not just how often you lose your market, but how much you lose your market by. So, yeah, yeah. if you have a position where the good rolls uh, mean you, it was a, it was a disaster not to double because you're only going to end up winning one point instead of three or uh, instead of two or four. That's another bigger reason to double here because you, like you said you lose your market by a ton when that happens. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. And okay, um, so, so you were honest enough to say you, I'm sure in Monte Carlo, you wouldn't miss this over the board because you're going to take the time to study it uh, in playing galaxy with the speed clock. Uh, yeah. You, you were honest enough to say you might miss it or yeah, probably there, yeah. uh, but over the board in, in Monte Carlo, you're going to, you're going to see this. Uh, I hope not, this, this actual position occurs. <laughs> then I'll know what to do. I hope it occurs in the finals because you you you're likely to make the finals, and I'm going to be doing the commentary in Monte Carlo, and nothing would give me greater pleasure than seeing you in the finals and seeing you win. Uh, yeah, that, you you uh, were in the you were in the uh, that would be you, good. Yeah. Oh, in also, the there's um, there there's an interesting play for White uh, after it goes double take six three, actually says he should make the ten point rather than hitting loose. So. Which, you know, I, I mean, that looks right, but, you know, there, there is the option of hitting Liz. Uh, six, three. Yeah, I would have played it too big. I would have played to the 10 point and hit. Wow. I think, yeah, well, you can double check it unless I. I'm going to right now. I'm going to hit, something hit plus plus. Anytime you use XG, hit plus plus. It's, it's the fastest. Uh, it's the best way to get a pretty good reading without rolling it out. Yeah. So let's see what, let's see what the boss says. The boss says that it's very close, close. Very 0 close. 0.013, which means you really would have to roll it out to be sure. So it's close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but but my play wasn't the right play. The second best play is 13.4. 13 my four, play, I guess, yeah. needs too many blots. Yeah, yeah, that, that's probably it, yeah. Um, yeah, so... so so I'm I, I'm I'm third best in this play, but that is interesting. And also, it's interesting that I blew the two one. Let's see how bad my play was by not lifting. I can understand lifting at this point was made. Of course, I'd lift, but I thought with that blot there, I might not be that bad. Yeah, see, my play of just hitting loose was very bad, not yeah. a blunder, but pretty bad. Yeah, 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 and uh, so yeah, this is a. Uh... Uh, an interesting of course, position right about the double one shift you did yeah. shift and and you bring it down to the 11 because that's a blocker and a builder for the five point right right all right john i will see you in a couple of days in monte carlo and hope yes. to see you in the finals and if nothing else we'll i'll see you by the swimming pool <laughs> okay sounds good bill all right thanks for the help looking forward to it okay take care bye-bye